All right, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, and welcome to the stream. Good morning, Kaputz TV. How you doing, Monster? Good morning. Let me check audio here. Audio sounds good. Oh, see if I broke something. Hang on. Hang on. I don't... I have the worst mousing skills there. All right, I fixed it. Hey. All right. Oh. <sighs> Today, it's all about site A. We have a cooling problem, power generation problem. I think I can address the cooling, the gas cooling problem. We discovered that the cooling radiators are in series and that if we put them in parallel, that should do a better job. Iron Gun, good morning to you. Nope, the moon. Look, we're on the moon. All right, let's uh, do this and this. Okay, I haven't saved in a while. They got a big update coming up with the, mainly the rocket. Hey, Kata, how you doing? Where am I at? Oh, all right. Uh, where's Ben? All right. So let's, um, This should be shut down, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> it's snowing and you're hiding under a blanket. Cool. Uh, how much? It's coming from the generator. Yeah, the generator's on. Alex here. Uh, Alex gave me the nod. All right. Now, since we're not going to be working on site B for a while, I'm going to turn off. Oh, wait. That not be the best way to do it. It's back on. These are off. Oh. Whoa. Oh. I think I prefer Space Engineer's graphics, although they are very similar. Um, yeah, two different beasts that get often compared to one another. difference between stationers and space engineers is there's no pew pew in this game no building of capital ships this is all basically think of it as a plumbing electrical survival simulator
Um, they they have assets for guns and turrets, but um, not currently active in the game. They have two different alien creatures that I've seen, but they haven't been in the game. Now, the, the game's original synopsis was to build a space station. And, uh, well, I'm not building a space station. Hey, Prime! Hey, Kata, thanks for the four months resub on your Prime. Appreciate that very much. This is all shut down. Gas generator, solid, nice, works. Gas generator is supposed to shut off at 50%, not it's 55. I can't remember. All right, so while the generator's on, the exhaust keeps dumping into here which is by design. Um, but as you can see, we have a temperature problem. So, here's our cooling system that doesn't seem to be working. I need to make a bunch of pipe. Pipe? Pipe for the pipe. All right, let's, uh, Steel and silicon. So Ben will be here in about an hour, then things will really get rolling. Gas temperature cooling 66.3. It's minus so. I am going to attempt to change this to parallel. I think this might be the wrong way of doing it, but I'll still try.
Oh, that's interesting. to one another. All right. <sighs> they do. You're very, you're right. All right. So, um, put these in a parallel configuration and they have a weird hitbox and we in fact can't get two across or can I Can't go here, right? That doesn't work. Okay.
is a prototype. So I used the wrong radiators. I know, you know. Right, so then if we want to set up a row. You know how sometimes you get focus driven on specific tasks on how something's going to work, and then, oh, that's how it's going to work. And you get one thing to work, you go, there, that'll work. Wait, that won't work. That was a prime example. Uh, because Sirius was not cooling fast enough, so we're going to try to do parallel. I'm probably setting it up wrong. That's how we learn. some research on the internet because I do know there is a difference. I just don't know the configuration. This is my take on it anyway. What? Oh. Uh. Hey Ben, how you doing? I, I'm breaking things so you can fix them later. So I need to go intersect. Oh, those are too far over. That's a problem. All right. I mean, that, that's how we operate. I come up with an idea and he goes, I think we can do it. I go, all right, let's do it.
So you guys know Ben. Ben's the uh, guy that makes things work. I lift the heavy equipment. Connected to all points. Power low. that they've been envisioned. But it's the, uh, I think it'll work. But then again, I could be wrong. Known to have. <laughs> That's okay, Ben. Don't worry about it. I was counting. Do you guys see that? Coffee priority one. Yes.
Um, the weird thing is, the only coffee drink in the house. I am. Um, I only really drink coffee for two particular tasks. I I had a good paying job, very hard working job. I can actually say I had the title of concrete demolition. Yes, I ran a jackhammer. Can't live without coffee. Oh, I know. Um, I got I got a part time job working for this guy who was tasked to, at a grocery store, you know how grocery stores have big refrigerators and freezers and they're all walk-in. Well, the refrigerator, something had happened underground and it started uh, growing like a big mound. So evidently some seepage or something like that. So we had to go and break up all the concrete, then melt the big iceberg that was in the middle. So I needed coffee to keep me up to get up and of course it was loaded with cream and sugar so then I worked at Microsoft um, we were getting uh, Age of Empires out and um, I was at the office for almost three days straight I need to go do some suit maintenance here I do get my daily doses of caffeine. I bet. It's my battery life. We're working in an area that doesn't have a thing. I want to fix that right now. I'm on a roll. Let's see. Do we have another rechargeable battery I can swap out? Good morning. What the heck is everyone doing today? Exactly. Uh, one coffee for me. Zero coffee cannot wake up. Two plus coffees cannot sleep. <laughs> that is quite the predicament. My cat decided to wake me up for him by eating and insulate. Oh, yeah. We have found that with Pookie, we cannot let him do a free-for-all on his meal bowl. We have to ration him. Otherwise, he goes, this is the last meal I'll have. Must eat it all as fast as I can. And then... I'll... Just, just thoroughly embarrassed with my... Bleh. You're in this for life. You know? She goes. <clears throat> Who 
Oops. That didn't work. Still didn't. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, it's even worse when you're in your socks. Yeah. I get it. All that. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Cookie's um a little upset with this room. So we have one big kind of picture window. You know, 
There's a big window in the middle and smaller windows on the side. It's got a windowsill. Um, and the way we had a big couch in front of it, a corner table, and then a called a chair and a half or a love seat. So Pookie would hop up onto the love seat under the table on the windowsill behind the curtain, which is fine. Now the tree's there. He can't get up there. It's very upset. Can't see my friends. Okay. I do have two regular cats that will come bypass the front, go to the side, go to the back. So, yeah. All right. Go back to work. So if um, I can't ride, it's one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. Make sure I'm staying consistent. That's the key, right? Uh, except for it looks like what did I do differently here? Oh, well, that's weird. Okay, so, huh? Like I actually beard. I was doing this. Squirrels too. Alright, so am I doing this right now? It looks good. to find patterns of so okay all right i'm doing it right make sure i'm doing it right Mine sits at the front door, watches squirrels have a full length glass storm door. Keeps a regular door open in the summer. 
No. If it's colder, I have to close it. It's just gives you the stink eye, dude. You got stuff to do. I know, I know. This. You know, Ben's gonna get in here and say, uh, it's all wrong. Do it again. Let's talk DIY. So yesterday, only day off, I um, I realized a couple days ago that when Alex and I hung the sheetrock, the bottom two perfectly straight. I checked it with a laser line and everything. The top left one centered. For some reason, we miscut the the edge, and so when it sat on the other sheetrock, the line goes and does a little bit of this towards the top. So I didn't have any meat for the sheetrock to to be nailed to. Plus, there's a window, so I had to, at the time, jury rig something to a stud so I can pack the sheetrock to something. I wasn't very happy with it. So yesterday I went and took that out, put something a little bit more beefier behind it. Um, and then, so at the very edge, which I'm not very worried about, it, you, you have a two by four, and then in the center, you put one part of, or you put one sheet rock and put the other slab. On this particular slab, this is where our breaker box is. So I'm not worried about covering anything up yet. So it starts off perfectly in the center and then it covers up. So the fix when I get around to it is just to snap a straight line and cut off the, the excess and then that'll be fine. So where the gap is on this side, it'll have to, today I'm gonna do some mudding. I'm, I'm hopefully for the end of the year that wall is going to be painted. And the goal. Hey, another happy panda. How you doing? Uh, the goal is that wall is going to become. It's going to have cabinets uh, above and below the miter station in front of it. We already got the power there, so it's, it's really awesome to have some more power in there. 
But what I'm going to do first is after I get it all mudded up and painted and sanded, sanded and painted, then we're going to take um, some stud finders and refine all the studs again, drawing lines so we know where the studs are. And what I, the first thing I want to do is put a piece of plywood up over the window, make sure it grabs studs so it has you know good um, good anchors, and then that will be the guide for cabinets. Get those up there, and then lower cabinets, then a miter station, tent for a while. Also have some storage. All right, so what do I want to do here? Okay, there. There we go. Uh, cabinets won't be this year. I'm hoping to get it painted and all the lines drawn. But we have got three more radiators, so I have room for... I don't have room for three. Um, um, so I'm going to fall in there. Okay. Hopefully that this is going to be enough. Alex got a new toy. One of Alex's passions is astral photography. And she's got a real nice camera, real nice lenses. She just got a Star Trek. Santa brought it. Early. Um, what am I looking for? My character died and I was able to get the dead body in a cryo tube. Nice! Oh, so, so that worked, huh? I didn't know if the cryo tubes worked or not. We do this above ground, all right. So let's get this dialed in. Uh, so now my goal is to get nitric oxide to see if I can bring my own dead body back to life. Ooh, anyway, I thought, I thought it was nitrogen for the cryo. I didn't know that. Okay. broke anything. There's hardly any gas in here. So, um, we gotta figure out how we got more gas into that pipe. Um, uh, I think it says, it says oxygen. Yeah, we're using O2. Um, oh, from the jetpack. Yeah, yeah, as I fly around, yeah. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I thought it said nitrogen. 
Um, Alright, so I have oxygen right here. Let's find a pump. No wire in the way. All right, so I don't know. I have not really messed with. That's on. It's off. off. Okay. So we're actually, or I am, pumping warm O2 into a cooling ray that we're using for cooling recycling. I just want to get it up to about, I don't know, between 900 kilopascals is, I think, my goal. This stuff should start cooling. Oops. One gizmo. Hmm. It's getting colder. What happens if I turn this off? Now, does it matter if I'm down here? Oh, nice and consistent. All right. So the temperature in the radiators is going down. It should radiate pipes okay well um see how this works so the temperature of our o2 right now is at 63 degrees right from the source oh it's 72 degrees actually 
Alright. What does that do? That's on, that's on. Why there's a pipe network is a different temperature. Two. Me too. that dialed in. Talk to Ben about the gas generator. We're almost out of fuel. Go ahead and just turn it off. All right. When it's nighttime, I'll go throw the solid generator. <sighs> um, because we don't have too much fuel left, I don't think. Let's see, do we have any here? Okay, we do have fuel here that should be mixed and ready to be used. Yep, perfect. And that gas line's on, which goes somewhere here. That's open. Goes here. Oh, maybe the. That's on. Ah, here we go. Refill. All So what should be happening soon, it's the generator's off. These will be turning off. Uh, look at the temperatures coming down. Look how fast they're coming down. Yay. That worked. And since we're using oxygen, we don't have to worry about the whole, like, uh, getting too cold, turning to ice, blowing a line. That's why we swapped over to O2. Oh. All right. working this right here is connected to um, some automation so Ben pulls the temperature from all the tanks storage and we get an average and we compare it to this and if the averages are above I think we're going for 30 degrees Celsius then this digital valve gets turned on and dumps cold oxygen into our recirculation system that uses uh we force the cooling process through the heat exchangers here sounds easier than making a system to keep in at a lower enough pressure um, 
could get a minus 160 stay as gas. Three hours of my life will never get back. Yeah. Well, you know, we were using, um, for the longest time, when someone explained how to use radiators and whatnot, and what to put in the pipes for the radiators, it's always been said X. So cool. Literally cool. So that's... So, hang on, let me finish. So the digital valve is back there, which connects to this gray system, and we have volume pump that forces the circulation. And we also have, oh, that's how I could have put it, more oxygen, Oops. all right. And then again, we force circulation into the individual tanks, not the O2, but we force through the exchange servers or the heat exchange. Exchange servers is Microsoft Mail. Uh, when, they, when they did the phase change with the gas, trying to get, keep X as a constant cooling, just it was it was hard um i still use x but again it's a dump thing that keeps the, oh i got you yeah that sounds like more work than i want to do so these should be finally off nope why no, there's low pressure but okay the temperature is going up in the o2 for some reason that's weird some break. Hmm. How temperatures are going up. <laughs> I wonder why. That one's going down. Going down. Going down. Down. So CO2 is going up because we're dumping CO2. Oh, it's coming down. Okay. Um, sun is heating up the O2 cooling. Uh, but it's in insulated pipes, though. But maybe, yes. in between 8 to 11 degrees Celsius. We need to keep the sun off these things. Okay. So, it's the solar, right? Yep. Funny thing is, pressure hasn't changed in the filtering at all. Why is that? Like these aren't really working. I guess this is where Ben wanted to experiment with adding more pumps. Mouse over the green on the filter. Oh. Oh. Okay, I didn't even know that had a thing. Zero KPA, zero KPA. So my pipe analyzer is lying to me. Oh, it's water. Oh, water in the system. 
So why is this not working? It's supposed to go into there, turned into a gas, and then put back in. Something ain't kosher here. Still gas. All right, so I know what, I know what to do. Those, those draw a huge amount of power. All right, so it's nighttime. I don't have the gas generator hooked up, I'm trying to reduce the amount of heat, heated gas going into the cooling. So we're gonna go over here and turn this on. Um, we ran into a problem that when solar was out, when solar, when the sun was out and I was running this, we were popping lines. So Ben added a transformer so we can isolate it. Good old Ben. That's a visual to let us know that it's running. All right. Okay, that's a little bit too cold. It's working very nicely. Now I'm going to actually dump this there go good so if i have h2o in here i i would have never thought of it. uh look at that really cold how did this get cold just being exposed there's no radiator system all right Now, wait a minute. If there's water in this line, it should be getting turned into a gas, right? Yep. Cool. Neat. All right. Remember at the beginning of the stream, that was 73.4 degrees Celsius? Yeah. aren't radiated out or insulated out here, so that's probably why. Turn this off. Good. Alright. Sweet. Let's 
Sweet, 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 sweet. So you guys might not have noticed, but I have changed my background music for all previous streams that had something spacey like I had this and I paid for it. I downloaded it and it was public domain, uh, copyright free music. I don't have my receipt anymore. I can't remember the name of the site. Yeah. Well, I, it's, it's actually from, uh, Harris Heller, the stream beats. Anyways, one of my videos for herbal that I use the music got flagged, not for copyright. It just said I can't monetize it. So I went, what? So I just said, I'm not going to find it. I can't find my receipt. I'll just, I knew there was, I had a backup. So long as, it, as long as it's nice and chill. That's right. I'm not trying to steal from Jamorian's chill channel. Where is it? There it is. Right. So no, nothing's being dumped into this line. And that's still running because... Okay. has the moon vibe. Well, thanks. So we have, I see liquid content is becoming a smaller number. Uh oh, well, it was. Mayday. <laughs> I guess it got too cold or too much pressure. I guess I could have just cut the pipe. Thanks a lot for the resub. Appreciate that. How the heck are you doing? Monster, thanks for the hype. All right, so obviously something's wrong here. Hey, Ben. Good morning, Andy. Um, our system for converting... Breaking. Okay, <laughs> there. Everything was running fine. Aspect of the... Oh, except for the leaky part. Yeah, got it. I guess it was just getting too cold. Yep. I got a null ref, so let me do a save here. I didn't do it. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Not my fault. I'm trying to see what's going on here. So there's zero liquid. And the pressure's real low, too, so I don't get it. Another null ref.
good if I jump in now? Uh, yeah. Hang on. A minute. One sec. Uh. Yeah, go ahead, man. Uh, doing great. Haven't been able to catch you lately. Getting lost in Satisfactory. Dude. Yeah, they just had that new update. I'm not going to do any more until they actually implement the story. It's supposed to be this year they go 1.0. Uh, I Factorio's getting uh, some updates too. Oh, nice. I guess. All right, so. I think I'm in. Yep. I actually have no idea what's going on. Anyhow, I thought I fixed a problem, and then all of a sudden, another problem comes along, and I actually don't know what's causing it. Alright, so, this is all good. It's for documentaries, gotcha. I haven't really touched it since update 3. Oh, oh wow. Now, the furthest I ever got was, um, gas generators now there's nuclear all right we'll let ben get all ben over here <laughs> so tell me what's wrong with this insulated tank please i don't understand Before I connect this, you see anything stewing inside the tank that is causing pipes to burst? No, that's an empty network. Yep. Good. Two I'm pulled. Reconnected. I'll monitor the tank. All right. But everything in the tank looks, I don't want to say normal, but looks. I mean, the tank's not going to explode, right? Well, it's mostly CO2. All right. A little odd, but it's fine. All right, so here we go. I'm going to connect it. The pressure dropped by one kPa. That's it. All right, so there's no liquid in the liquid pipe. Um, isn't there a touch of H2O? Say again? Oh, well, isn't according to... Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean on the outside. Okay. Yeah. I can oh, see... Oh, yeah, you've got liquid water coming in and out of there. With virtually no pressure. That's no bueno. Well, isn't that what this uh, condenser and expansion valve is supposed to do? Yeah, it looks like it's pulling it. Huh? Well, where is it coming from? Oh, actually, it doesn't matter because guess what? We're redoing the entire filtration system. Oh, okay. Yay. Yeah. See, and then we pipe burst. So I know how to fix this. This is how to fix this. <laughs> Hang on. I have a solution. Liquid expansion tank? No, no, no. This is oh. this is how I fix things when I don't understand what's broken. <laughs> I see. Yeah, yeah I know. I say I don't see. 
fixed until it happens again. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna yeah. connect it. Now, is there I anything? To see how uh, how much that much CO2 winded up in that tank. See, that's an expansion valve. Oh. It's a condenser. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. Is there anything in... Hold that valve. There we go. Yeah, there's nothing in the pipe now. Is there anything in the, the valves? Okay, so it's an empty network again. Yeah, this is, must be the valve that's causing all the issues. It's producing CO2? Not now, it's not. Thank God. Alright. about the direction of these valves well i did model this based upon you put in place over here the other one yeah okay i think let's see so uh, so going to the tank is a condensation a con condensation valve is that right and coming from the tank is a expansion valve Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you do, uh... let me let you ponder that for a second. I'm gonna go turn off the solid generator. All right. Come back. So you saw I swamped out the radiators to. Um, it is a chilly morning. It's, well, it's actually not. It's 64 degrees. All right, so the gases are cooling way too cool. <laughs> now we got too much cold. So is that valve still on? No, it's off. Okay. That logic works. Now it's... Alright. Ben, you do what you need to do. Guys, I'm going to take a quick bio break. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Thanks, Baron. Hey, Baron, how you doing? For some reason, I'm not getting audio. Hang on. Testing went up. Did I break something? Um. Yeah, I'm not hearing anything. Yeah, I'm not hearing that. So hang on a sec. Let me get that turned off. Switch back to the game. Now at and let me resync my headphones. No. I'll be honest with you, these headphones I've had since 2015, I love them. All right, now I hear stuff. Ben, Ben, hello, you there, Ben? Yep, yep. There we go, there we go. How does the phase change update change things? Um, ways we haven't yet figured out. <laughs> exactly, they, they said it does this, and what we found, oh, we changed the device. Yeah, it's a bit of a cheat. I'm not 100 percent sure it's gonna work, but what do you have? The, you said okay. 200. Uh, the re so explain to me why 200 kilopascals versus like five. Yeah, so in this case, uh, it's going to pull liquid from the liquid side, turn it into a gas, and pressurize the gas pipe up to 200 kPa. Um, one of these valves going the wrong way then. Uh, I don't know, I should probably have double check that, but I mean, there's a liquid side and a gas side, so. <laughs> okay. How yeah, does the... I had to deliberately remove the condensation, condensation, condensation valve. Oh, uh -oh something blew up over yep. there. Okay. Okay. I, I can fix this. 
fixed. <laughs> How's the temperature in that tank? The poopy line blew, huh? Yeah, well, it's because of radiator. Good. Negative 55 Celsius. That's, That's because uh, it's 600 KPA. All right. Um, it's got liquid CO2, liquid H2O, liquid nitrogen. Right, so, hang on. Let's. It's a. This is not a happy tank. All right. So. We, we were talking about doing um, a pre-cooling here. I don't think we have to do that now. Unless you think it's necessary if we're going to be running a, a lot of generators. Oh, no, we're going to be redoing the whole thing from scratch. Okay. Um, so you have no condensation valve, Ben. Yeah, he. we think it's breaking something. Yeah, he removed the condensation valve. So, yep, purely in touch. All right, so let me go. I turned the generator off down here, Ben, because I was trying to make sure our cooling was working. So, I'm going to turn it back on. Oh, well, yeah, big jump on a power board here. There we go. Then, I'm going to go turn the solid off. Although, I guess that doesn't matter because you isolated it, right? Oh, solid is off, right? Okay, fine. Um, what is working? Yes, oh yeah, it's working real well. You said you were going to turn it off. So the board says it's already off, Andy. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, liquid filtering. You, I don't know if you can. I, I would say just press your ice. Well, there's a way of grabbing liquid and pulling it from a gas line. I don't think it's really called filtering, but yeah. All right. So now with the generator on, we have a two phase system here. When this builds up over, what, what do I have it set for? What's that memory say? 200 kilopascals. We dump. Yeah. Dump the poopy line into the holding. The holding stays until three megapascals, and then we dump it in the filtering. So do we need to... So the only thing that's dumping gas right now are a couple back pressure regulators, which I'm not too worried about, and the gas generator. So if we run off the solar and the solid, then we don't have to worry about gas is being dumped and having to filter it until we redesign this. Which is interesting because the generator's on. How come I'm not seeing any... Huh. Oh, oh, I know why. Um, all right, so let me give you a list of problems. Okay. The gas generator is not going to really run because we're out of fuel. And I think I saw some atmosphere down here. We blow a pipe down here too. Moon snow. I think so. <sighs> So do you need the generator to run? Or is it a good idea or a bad idea? Uh, I think our power levels are okay. Uh, it shouldn't be needed. Okay. So the orange tank back there, the insulated one, that has mixed gas, so we can use gas. And it's at the right temperatures. This one back here. This has got, oops. Yeah. 16 megapascals in it. Okay. So we do have gas, but I haven't been wanting to mix any because we've been having some temperature issues with our gases. Talking about yeah. our, Ben and I have got gas problems. Yeah, we're getting uh, that, at that age. Or... <laughs> can, you f can you fill rooms with water still? I think so. Now you can. 
All right, so would you like to see? <laughs> <laughs> so the gas tank down in the generator room is almost empty. So I turned off the valve. So just in case we had to spark it, have it. Okay. All right, so the changing of the filtering is you want to add pumps before and after the filters or something like that? Uh, we're going to pressurize the input pipe of uh, all the filters. So all the inputs and are going to get pressurized via volume pumps or turbo pumps? Turbo pumps. Okay. One turbo pump to pressurize the input. Um, we have to split the uh, waste side of each of these units and then slap them back into another turbo pump to pump the main line again. Okay, so just because you pressurize the inside, you want to make sure you kind of balance the output because you want to, if you're forcing it, say, we'll say you're just arbitrary numbers, 500 kilopascals in, it's only coming out 10, we're going to have a problem somewhere. Yeah, we want high pressure on the input, but low pressure on the output side, on okay. both output lines. So we All have right. to pump the heck out of these things. All right, so I'm going to clear some space here. And... Well, actually, it's been modified just where it is right now. So you want to put a turbo pump... Big of a change. Yeah. So we need uh, one, two... Uh, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, so 14 or 15 turbo pumps? Oh, just two. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So I thought you were going to do it for each filter. Oh, no. Just pressurize it at the input side, uh, the main input there. Okay. By the. All right, I'll get you two turbo pumps. Over here. See, I would have done it at. See, the way you're talking, I was going to put it at the beginning of everything and then the output of the waste of the O2, so that's the beginning, and then I would have put a turbo pump in the front of all of them and at the waist of all of them. That's not necessary. Okay. All right. Did you know me? I love to over-engineer. Turbo pump. I need electron. Hang on. I have electron. So, um... Okay, we, we had a condensation valve, but for some reason, for whatever reason, uh, pipes were bursting. So, it was very bizarre. Oh, Fred, all right. <laughs> the, the inconsistencies of how certain things are made. Here's your turbo pump spin. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I almost hit you with. Oh, I hit you. I'm sorry. So, as you're doing that, I'm going to cloud your memory. Or I'm going to cloud your. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. The, Asco. the new <laughs> over parallel, over parallel, over paralyzed. My over engineering, I'm, paral I'm doing parallel piping here with the radiators for cooling, for our cooling array. Yeah. Works. Um, the visual valve that goes into the circulation is, for the first time is off and without us doing it. Oh, so we've reached a. Uh... Average stylus then. Right, which, if I'm reading this credit, is 303 Kelvin. Uh, right, because most of the tanks are like 20-some degrees, except for the oxygen, which is at uh, 56, which averages out to 35. All right, so if, if the valve is off, now what we're doing is just whatever is ambient in the pipes is going through the heat, the heat exchanges, and now the, the tanks are going to balance each other out. Yes, that's correct. And do we have uh, an actual trigger? Or is it just going to be a... No, it's it's continuous. Okay. There's a volume pump attached to each loop. Right. Which I should probably double check because I think I turned it off some of them for testing purposes last time. Mm -hmm. They're all on. 
Yeah, they're off. So that means we won't be able to bottom out. And so is there, I guess my question is, is there a way to use a particular gas as a, I guess there's not. <sighs> The only thing that's missing is, like I said last time, it's the calculation to account for the mass of the different tanks. Gotcha. Need more pipes? Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're not yep. the right color. They are now. <laughs> so the, the conundrum I come up with is that I'm back with old school and not jeep guy stuff right so we don't we're not doing things with moles we're doing it just the old-fashioned sloppy right so yeah, if i want to straight up temperature of the tank regardless right. of how much gas is in it okay okay all right I got a question. If the top side is at 99%, shouldn't a medium transfer be a uh, medium transformer be on? Transfer power down? Oh, it is. Never mind. I did not see that. That's right. Okay. That's set for. So that means we're down. Wait, why is downstairs batteries not charging? We're not using all. Well, maybe we're using more than we transfer. <clears throat> Lolan was fun. <laughs> bring me two turbo pumps somewhere uh yeah they're over there by the um water system oh gotcha yeah, i threw them and kicked them and they almost missed you and evidently your peripheral vision inside your helmet doesn't <laughs> almost missed me yeah got it <laughs> Uh, the next update's supposed to be mainly the rocket. They're redoing the whole arm system. All right, so where do you add the turbo? Oh, you're doing it right now. Uh, it doesn't matter which end of the pipe we connect from. We just need to connect the common outs to the common in. Huh. And 
this is where we're going to swap out the pipe for a pump. Right. I'm assuming um, that turbo pump needs to turn on when there's pressure or we're going to leave it on all the time. Um, that's a good question. Well, we have a bank of logic here that we can use for it. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Can the turbo pump... Well, the bottom line is that pump only needs to be on if there's something to be pumped okay. right to the, the line here. So we don't need the uh, the digital valve. Um, what's the purpose of the digital valve again? If there's so much pressure in the poop line, then the digital valve gets turned on and gets filtered out. So we could actually swap. Yeah, I think those. we can skip that. Yeah. Okay. I'll swap. And then we can actually use the same logic that we're doing for the digital valve for the turbo. So okay. if we get if we get a certain amount of pressure in the pre-cooling, time to filter. Yeah, that works. Okay. Let me set up the other one here. Could be driven by logic here because we don't need that pump to be on unless uh, uh, there's right. nothing to pump. Right. Well, the um, I think I might have a possible solution. Let me find it. So the logic right here that's on is to turn the filters on when there's pressure, and they stay on until there's no pressure. Yeah, that's gonna change. Okay. Can you put a pipe over well, here? Well, actually, well, you just need to increase that to like 200 kPa. Okay. It's 200. Let me check my notes here. Oh, no, actually, it's a lot more than that. Um, you want 13 megapascals on the input side.
this logic this off is what was being used as oxygen was the trigger <clears throat> that the old cooling that if the oxygen got above 30 degrees celsius it would dump cold air i mean sorry it would dump um cold oxygen into the tank oh, or, no yeah. use anymore yeah okay uh i'm gonna repurpose this to turbo pump huh um huh. so these turn on the filters yeah you need one to turn the turbo pump on the input side uh, you got to hook. I will use another logic step to drive the second turbo pump that's currently on right there. Oh, okay. There. I'll hook up the logic side of this turbo pump here. Okay, I'll program this logic step then. Right, what the heck am I programming for again? <laughs> uh, the. I want to turn on the turbo pump. I'm going to say input side, input side right. when the input has something. Circuits are separated or not? It's not. Didn't we? No. Let's find it. The only thing you separated was right here. Oh wait! No, 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 no. Um, I was using a tr small transformer on the filters but then I switch it to a batch rider yeah filter um we don't need hmm. no actually we do need this here <laughs> Andy it's getting yeah. complicated no no it's all easy so this chipset right here, what is the reason we want to activate the turbo pump when pressure hits? If there's something to pump. Yeah. Right. So, so if if this pipe analyzer here detects any pressure, then turn on this turbo pump. Nope. Why? Oh, it's because coming. it's pumping from the waste line from the filtration system. So we need a digital analyzer on that common line there. Wait, so let me ask you this. Um, if gas comes through here and the pipe analyzer hits it and the filters turn on, so you have two triggers to let you know there's stuff coming in. Are you thinking there's going to be lingering gas when this is turned off? I don't think there will be. Uh, yeah, I feel it probably will be. Well, if there is, the filters will still be on. The turbo filter or the turbo pump will be off. Because this set of yeah, logic. We don't. Oh, oh, you changed this. On. Oh, you changed this. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um. Right, you... I'm gonna slip another digital analyzer over here. Actually, I should check if I can like, read that one over there, but. Pipe analyzer gas staging. Okay. So that pipe analyzer is the trigger for this turbo pump now, which used to be a digital analyzer. Yeah. Yes. So let me try to get on track with you here. So you want this to be on when the filters are on. And it should be off when the filters are off. No. No. I only want it to be on if there's pressure in the pipe behind it. Okay. Which is the, well, okay. So the filters only come on if there's pressure 
for it. Oh, wait, but you changed that. So that's throwing me for a loop. So the filters are going to come on unless you change the compares. Nope, all I change is the, the setting on the memory chip. And that's... So it's going to leave pressure in. So there's always going to be pressure in the pipes in. Yes. The higher, the better, because that's where the filtration units are most efficient. Okay. I have to, I have to see this because. Yeah. Basically to give you a rough idea, the input side of the filtration units has to be ideally between 13 and 40 megapascals. Anything other than that, it's not efficient. Okay. All right. Which is a crazy high pressure, but yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I would love to see this in operation. So, so we're figuring yeah, we out, <laughs> so the, the filters will turn on only when there's a high pressure. Yes. That's okay. Right. So the, purpose of the turbo pumps, both of them, is to keep that input pipe pressured as much as possible. All right. So yeah, you're going to need another analyzer somewhere for your input and I guess you could actually do them both on one. Yeah, we need the trigger for the first turbo pump a trigger for the filter and a trigger for the second turbo pump under all different conditions so so you got the filter already so you can repurpose this for the turbo pump the cell one the first one yeah all right and then i'll go get you chips for the second one. all right thank you yep. i was i was unaware of those conditions i thought that would definitely i guess the pipes can hold up to 60 megapascals so i, I guess okay yeah it's kind of a narrow window we might have to slap a couple of uh, expansion tanks just to make sure that the turbo pump doesn't uh, blow up a pipe then at then pressures you're going to get liquid x yeah that's why he was saying that's a separate problem <laughs> <laughs> that's why we've got that uh, thing that keeps pulling up at the end of the filtration units over there yes You can skip that uh, extra pipe analyzer. Uh, I got a reading on the line here. Okay. I was just making you some chips. Actually, no, we still need the pipe analyzer for that second turbo pump. All right. One problem at a time. Sorry. That's all right. Oh. All right. I made the processor. What is that? Okay. You can't stack processors? Oh, you can't. That was weird. Wasn't paying attention.
All right, the pipe analyzer you need down here for the second turbo pump, right? Yes. Uh, oh, you haven't installed the second turbo pump. Oh, it's over here. What? One. Where's the second one? That is the second one. Where's the first one? Oh, that's the input one? Okay. All right. Yeah. Here you go. Guys, I haven't been really ignoring you, but you guys are talking about some stuff that I'll have to catch up on. <laughs> I'm in a zone, yes. I'm on the moon zone. Yeah, the phase change through a lot of curveballs at people's current filtering system. So this is actually the outside. And that means all this, the that should change over here. Are we doubling up on something here for a second, Ben? So this set of logic here is going to turn this turbo pump on when there's too much pressure here. Uh-oh. Yeah, I guess we are. All right. Because I was under the impression you were going to have, like, another pump, like, here and there. But okay, so... Oh, so that's why this chick's blinking. <laughs> Because we got two chips trying to grab the same pump. Let okay. me turn this on. Um, uh, 
Yeah, but it's still programmed to it. Just, oh, okay. So, oh, we just, just burst a pipe. Where else? Hydration critical. He's got two full, I bet. Anything else? I'm gonna connect to the uh, liquid part. No, oh, oh, okay, so we're, we're busting pipes everywhere. Things are getting cold. I see. Suit maintenance. section it looks like there's another section cut here i just th that burst so that's why i cut that we put the analyzer temperature's 215 kelvin uh there's a little bit of liquid in the line So our cooling array is at minus 105 degrees Celsius. And it's yeah, got a burst pipe here. All right. And actually the cooling system is um, contaminated. Somehow something mixed outside the digital valve. Oh, oh. how did that happen? What the heck was I looking at that was contaminated? Oh, maybe I was looking at a gas line. <laughs> Sorry. Wait. Right. It's all O2. I don't know what I was looking at. The world? I was looking at the world? All right. No, we're fine. Oh, you're right. I was looking the at the world. on fire. <laughs> Am I seeing a leak here? Oh, yeah. Right here. Oh, look there. It's another condensation valve. All right. All right, let's try to get the filtering system back online. Let's see if we can band-aid on this. Oh, another line here. Is it getting too cold? I guess so. Let me take a reading on the tank here. Liquid H2O, liquid CO2. Yeah, this tank might have gotten a little too cold. Okay. Oh, we sucked. Uh, we sucked it out now, which creates. Huh. Oh, another burst pipe over there. Got it. phase change model is not behaving in a normal way <laughs> yeah it's right when we think we got things then we don't all right 
saving that liquid carbon dioxide here, which is what solid carbon dioxide is supposed to happen. And there it goes again. Um. Something not feel right to you about all of this? No, I'm, I'm just, just um, me. no, I, I'm just, it seems like we're fighting something that wasn't here last time. And, uh, yeah. And it's because there's no heat for some reason circulating. I, I that's probably the wrong word. It's gonna start blowing. I'm just gonna let it blow. Let it, whatever's in it, let it. I'm gonna see if I can suck it down. Okay. Put the first turbo pump here. Uh, well, it's not connected. <laughs> so, all right, you got it turned on? Yeah, I'm reconnecting it bit by bit here. Okay. Need to turn on. Need to get some logic going. Oh, you want to build up the pressure in the? Yeah. Okay. All right. So if I turn this on and repair that pipe side of the filter is at almost three megapascal so this is working we're sucking it down right. me sucking up the poopy line <laughs> that's good Six kilopascals on this side. All right, you're at three, almost three megapascals. All right, so um, twenty-six pascals. So if I go turn on generator, is the solid generator on? Oh. Or it says it's off. All right, solid gen. It is off. Or, uh, I gotta start using the board. All right, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna get some fuel into our gas generator and start introducing some warm gases. All right, I'm gonna fix the rest of the logic for the pumps here. All right. So if I this away, this. Let's see here. How do I want to do this? I want. That's off. That's good. 
That's on, that's good. Darn it. First on the way. This on. That on. This. That's going up. That off. Turn that off. This. That on. Turn that on. And. Okay. Now there should be gas. Oh, it, it's it's a nightmare. It is. Gas generator being turned on. Exhaust pipe is oh that's why we've got a broken exhaust pipe down here. Oh yeah, and I might have to change that uh, purge valve back to a condensation valve. Yeah. Oh. All right. Okay. Gas generator should be running. And it is only outputting 26.3 kilopascals, but 688 degrees Celsius with CO2 at the highest concentration. All right, so let me follow this. Good. The valve. drop maybe the turbo pumps are just pumping it faster three so it's right here 26.3 then after after a one-way valve Pressure goes from 26 because it's a smaller network to a larger network at three kilopascals. It's staying pretty constant. So that means that here, if I turn this off, I don't get it. A high temperature. Generators on. I guess it's filling up a big whole pipe. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't understand. Well, all right, so let's go down the generator. If you're done, are you done? I think so. The generator's on. And, okay, there's a mist. Is there another burst pipe? Somewhere? All right, so what was the problem initially was there was a section of pipe here burst. As I take a look at this, the output from the generator is very warm, not very much pressure. 26.3 kilowatts. <laughs> so 
what you read? Yes, 680 some degrees Celsius, yep. Yeah. Right. So as we follow this, the, the next time it splits is right where the output from the ice crusher is. So we have a one-way valve. So it goes from 26.3 and drops down to 3.07 kilopascals, which makes sense. It's pushing gas into a larger network, right? Uh, yeah, so the one-way valve is not going to get anything escape until the pressure is higher than where it's going to, which actually it is now, isn't it? Yeah. It's 3 kPa on the output and 26 on the input. Unless there's a bus. Why isn't it flowing? Unless, yeah, that's what I'm... Unless there's a brake somewhere that I didn't see. It's almost like this one-way valve is not working. I'm going to replace it just regularly. Okay. We're having some instabilities with pressure and pipes bursting and stuff like that. There's another one way valve up here I'm going to swap out. Are you replacing it with a new one or just disassembling it? Re-adding it. Just disassembling and re-adding it. I sent... Pressure is building up on the input side. Okay. I see this pressure box. now. I took out a, a one-way valve up here. Yeah, the output side is increasing a lot too. Okay. Now I'm going to replace this valve that was up here. Oh, we broke the one-way valves. I, I did. So much. Turn off the logic for the turbo. Just I don't want anything on that's doing something. So 225 castles. Somewhere gas is. Back to the same stuck readings. Hmm. Hold the one-way valve again up here. Yeah, I see the change there. Pressure is building up on the output. I'm going to try swapping it. Hold the valve. All right, valve's in place. Yeah. Let's try this, Ben. Why don't you hop out? Let me do a save and reload. Yeah, okay. Save. All right, I'm out. All right. What are we on? Three. Forty-two. Some music. Hey. Spot. All right, that's saved. You're launching the game. Sorry about that, guys.
That was interesting. I was getting null refs, but it, it was sound. Oh, maybe it was related to pipe bursting. All right. Go. Oh. Okay. Stay right. I wasn't too, wasn't too concerned because it wasn't saying, it was a sound. All right, hang on one sec before you join, Ben. Let me see. Still three. 27 kilopascals. Ah, all right. It's the same. A little higher, but not to worry about it. I think 3.1 kilopascals. So this should be reading. Sweet. Is it going to, is it going to go any higher? The generator's on. That is a big poopy line network here, right? The thing about it is I don't see the gas quantities increasing at all. Is the generator on? Something's on gotta be the gas ship. Yeah. Alright Ben, go ahead and hop in. I have All to right. have you. In. Yep. I'm at a loss. Thinking if the uh, one-way valves are not going to behave the way we expect them to, uh, we would have to pull them. Okay, I can do that. That's easy. I mean, let's double check with the the Pedia. Okay. Oops, I threw key. All right, valve. Cause it was working. Yeah. So. One-way gas valve. One-way gas valve moves gas in one direction only from input side to output side. Only permits flow if the input pressure is higher than the output pressure. Makes sense. Yeah, except that that's not the way it's behaving. So, yeah, let's pull them. Okie doke. Uh, okay, I gotta get some replacement pipe. Right, and then we have All right, pressure is oh, I don't know. Nope. It's going down. I'm working on the one down here. Oh, oh I thought you already swapped. So the pressure should be going up. Where I'm at, it's 204. Not budging. Well, it should be in a steady state unless something's feeding it. But it should be going up. This gas generator is on. Okay, so something's feeding it. Yeah. yeah. I'm writing pretty steady state. Why? There's a bit of shift in. How much gas is that solids generating putting in? What? It seems like it's not a whole lot. Oh, 
Oh, all right. That's interesting. The gas generator is only outputting two. You got no gas? Um, putting out 11.5 kilowatts. Okay. There's no gas going. What it's supposed to do. Okay. Gas goes in here. I can't see. Those are on source. Oh, yeah, it's, got a, it's got a fat reserve of gas here because it's got that nitrous injected uh, fuel. All right. So it looks like gas valve is on. Oh. No, we're almost out of gas. We, we sucked through a lot of gas. All right. All that valve is off here. Is that intended? That, well, that valve feeds the source to this tank. Yeah. So if you look on that side, we have 15.8 megapascals. I filled this up quite a bit and it got drained real fast. So yeah, because we ran without it, with it being turned off for a while. Okay. So it was just sucking down the uh, the nitrous fuel. Oh, all right. So, all right. Let me fill it up. Let me turn off the generator. It's off. Um, I mean, this valve. Let's see if I get you a reading on what it's supposed to uh, fill the nitrous tank to. to fill the super fuel tank to 500 kPa but it's already at well over a thousand oh this fuel is contaminated it's ah. burned off oh, okay yeah there's the problem <laughs> all right let's let's all bypass right, so the super a... fuel there's a fancy um, array of valves here designed specifically to uh, purge this tank. Okay. See if we can get through it. <laughs> All right, so I won't do anything until you figure out the purging process. So here's the poopy line, so it has to come. Okay, so, so the valve here is off. That's the fuel feed. See if that's contaminated, and it is not. Okay, so this is pure fuel. All right, so this is shut off here. We're gonna leave that shut off. Turbo pump to the poopy line here. Oh, what's the second one for? That's to drain the fuel line, I guess, if it got contaminated. Uh. This one here, yeah. Well, what's the other one for? This one I'm the standing, one standing on? on. Yeah. Well, yours is for the super fuel, right? Yeah, but that just purges the super fuel tank, doesn't it? Well, Because yeah. the super fuel itself is... Oh, wait, where does that go? <laughs> well, what you... so that valve's off, so no normal fuel can come into the purple line, right? Right. All right, so that mixer's off, so we're not mixing any fuel. So if we leave that one on and that one off, it will drain. This pump that I'm standing on will drain. This one's connected up just to the fuel line. So if our fuel was contaminated, we could do fuel only or both. Oh, that's why I did that for us. So that's on. Yeah, we have had, we must yeah. have had some weird. We did, yeah. Contamination problems in the past. All right, so that's going to dump into the poop, poopy line. So we should see <laughs> some pressure now. Eight point, and then it's dropping off. That's interesting. Right, 
So somewhere along the line, something doesn't die. So I hit my head. So there's no way that you... The turbo this pump... running on a regular fuel. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Um, so on the filter system, the turbo pump is on. Um, is Logic doing that, or did you just turn it on to try to pressurize it? Uh, I turned it on manually, but the Logic should have shut it down if it, the pressure inside the pipe exceeds 13 megapascals. Okay. Right. So... The poopy line, unless it's cooling off really fast, which I don't see, some somewhere it's it's draining off somewhere. We have another leak somewhere. Found another one-way valve here. That. Thing in the poopy line up here well okay hang on let, let, let's both be in the same place so where are you at at saying not here okay right so right this this poopy line gets fed based upon the condition here i have this all turned off because i want to see it build up before i don't want to see i don't want us generating something and then something is is draining it i'm trying to find where our hole is right now so right now gotcha. it's dropping oh uh, yeah and so the poopy line here goes to the furnace. I don't see any blown line. And it goes over to the second greenhouse. There's a one-way valve that was coming from the uh, solid fuel generation. We're not using that, so I disabled that. I'm trying to figure out, I have a poopy line over here or something. Oh, it's a waste for, that's a filter, not an air conditioning, so. What is this waste line over here for? Oh, okay, that's for the filter. All right, that makes sense. Forgot. Yeah, so it's slowly dropping in pressure. There's another tank way over here. Um. I'm gonna do the it. pressure is dropping, but the temperature is increasing. Hang on. All right. So I there's another small tank over here, uh, non-insulated. Is the gas going into the tanks? You mean the filtered tanks? No, it's not. I have a very high temperature, low pressure tank over here by the traders. It's no longer connected as a source. Oh, high temperature. Pressure in the pipes is less than the tanks. The the this this uh this right here we call our waste line, our poopy line. This comes from all sources of waste that goes into the filters. Okay, now it's going up. Yeah, I found a leak over here. Oh, where, where you at? Burst pipe. Oh, there we go. Okay. Found it. Yeah, we're going to have to check the whole system. All right, well, I see. There we go. Yeah, that's working by design. So I'm going to turn this logic on. This logic is set for... If we get over 200 kilopascals, or nowhere near, this turbo pump turns on and we'll feed the pre-cooling, or what do you want to call this, the poopy line staging area. Right now we should have a state of zero. Okay. So, I bet the one-way valves were working, just we had another leak. Possible. Honestly, I think we're better off without them. But, okay. Yeah, my opinion. I was just trying to make sure that we didn't spread too much stuff 
in wrong places. Alright, I'm going to repair that uh, section here. I'm going to reconnect. So we were using this tank over here initially, so I want to pump this out, actually, so we can get rid of this tank. This tank we were using because we are going to do a rocket like gases, and we are going to have a local area to store it. I need a pump. And I don't see anything. All right, so what do we got here? That's a digital valve. Regulator, regulator. Do you have a any pumps on you? You got a turbo pump. Yep, I'll and take it. And I think there you are. Thank you. So either we created a condition or we had a bug, something corrupt, and it started bursting pipes for some sort of weird condition that the condensation valve was broken. Did we replace those? Yeah. All right, I'm introducing more waste into the system. There's not much. Yeah, I think I've got some extra from the second furnace I could reconnect here. Okay. That line right there, you're looking at the insulated one, that comes from the uh, solid fuel furnace area. Yep. And I'm, I'm draining this tank over here. Okie dokie. So, it, why is it only 53 kilopascals? Huh. It was much higher before. Oh, oh the gas pumping it out. Oh, the gas generator turned off. We have no source. Turbo pumps on. Okay, hang on. Which one? Oh, that one's always been on. Oh, it's off. Okay. Well, I'm gonna turn it off. Yeah. Okay. So, this, if you turn it on, it's not gonna get anything because this cert, this logic's turned off. Um, lost our source. The gas generator turned off. Did we? Did we purge the lines down here? No. Still purging. So that should still be going to the poop. Sure he's going to okay, We do have some gas. Mixers on. Did you turn the mixer on? No. Okay, 
is there logic that turns a mixer on? Yes. Okay. Is that the purple stuff? Uh, I believe it's on the ceiling. It's on the who? It's on the ceiling above the uh, super fuel tank. Oh, okay. Okay, turn that off so it won't mix. I'm trying to drain this line. I guess it got to a certain level and decided to remix it. Well, All right, there's the high pressure. Oh, very warm, low pressure. So 50 kilopascals. Yeah, the super fuel is combusted. Gotcha. All right, we still have to purge that tank. I'm, I'm, it's purging right now. Alright. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay. So somehow that got contaminated, probably from a burst pipe or something like that. I don't know. That is a concoction of regular fuel and this is nitrous oxide so we make a super fuel and once that gets mixed the output gets dumped here which goes into the generator yeah oh that's true So it looks like whatever happened. Now that's getting really cold. Should see the pressure is going to go down because it's getting cold. All right, so if I turn this on, he's got Arlini pressure over here. There was a lot more pressure. Wonder if the filter's turned on. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. Is I think so if I turn this off, this valve's on, and I turn this valve on. This is regular fuel. regular fuel in the line that's off so it can't get mixed this is on to let it flow that's off we should have and these are set for 70 I think so yep all right so now turn this on Should see right, cool. That means that is this draining real fast? Shouldn't be going very fast. We're only pumping 70 kilopascals, actually 140 kilopascals. Okay. Hmm. So 
70, 70. With the output's only 60. Interesting. All right, definitely warmed up the gas. Pressure is slightly increasing, all right. Looks like things are back to normal. So if I see a haze around here, no, it's Why is the temperature going down? <clears throat> Pressure's going up. Temperature's going down. Is there water in there? It doesn't show any liquid. All right, now if this logic works, and that hits 200 kilopascals, that turbo pump should turn on. Oh, I guess because the pipe is uninsulated, is exposed to vacuum. I get it. Thank. Total sense. So if the sun comes out, supposedly the sun will radiate some heat, a whole lot, but some. All right, 200 kilopascals coming up. logic's turned off i got to ask ben how this new system works all right that's one mystery solved <gasps> yeah um so the next one would be if all right so let me i'm going to re reconnect these again which was i can't remember he's got this oh he doesn't have that reconnect that was supposed to be a condensation valve um So those are gas valves, so it should, okay. So let's do this side first. Let's see if we got anything going on. Nope. 
And nope. Alright. things get too cold or yeah too cold and we get liquid formed hopefully that takes care of it. Funny because this pipe network is connected to that, but it doesn't show anything in it. Oh well. Not much left. gas gets mixed on the spot what I was going to do was maybe Posted the cookies that have been on the go while I watch. Oh, cookies. All right, so we can turn, I'm assuming we can turn this off, right? Because there's nothing in there. So we're going to turn, oops. That off. Just to make sure everything is hunky dory, this little tiny pipe network right here.
I have to ask Ben about the switch position has to be in a proper position for the logic to work. So when you intervene manually, it breaks the logic. So, no logic hooked up to this tank. Oh, there's tank. So... Mixer. So this reads... Mixer. Looking at... Uh-oh. All right. I gotta have Ben fix this. I broke his logic. So the logic reader has no device. I think it was the tank. So we're looking for tank insulated super fuel. But I don't know, is he looking for pressure? process along I need to make some steel so I'm going to use some fuel generate a lot of pressurized high temperature gas so to do that I need iron so okay I'm back all right all right so um I think I broke something, but then I think it fixed it. And I want to hurry up this process to see if the new filtering system works. So to do that, we need to have um, high pressure on both sides of the valves, right? No, high pressure on the input, low pressure on the, or lower pressure on the output, right? Yes. Okay. So the only way we can do that, because the only viable source we have is the gas generator, and it's not giving us that much. So I was going to make some steel because we're getting low. Perfect. Yeah. Um, but I, I need help with math. Let me grab. If I want to make 800 steel, it's a two to one ratio, right? Uh, or three to one. Is it three to one? Let's check the wiki. parts iron one part carbon all right so let's see here what do i want to do here so if i do 600 iron how much cop or i'm sorry how much coal do i need 200 600 iron, go to our coal deposit. Oh, oh that's not. 
on so power. Oh. Alright, thanks, Kata. Yeah, it's um it's uh stream beats from Harris Eller. Eller. So I need four of these. One, two. All right. So uh, let me tell you what I broke and I think I fixed. It was taking a very long time to drain the contaminated um, fuel. So it got down to 650 passels. So I just deconstructed it, added it, and I think I renamed the tank correctly and I think I fixed the logic. Cool. So I will let you See if I mess that up or not. All right, so we are looking to add 200 kilopascals of fuel. All that's going in. Add the ingredients. here that sucks down the poopy line do you want to leave some pressure in here in case you want to get some ratings or uh, reset that memory to zero no that's okay um like i said this doesn't get fed until we have at least 200 kilopascals in the poopy line so this this is like the holding area or the pre-cooling area okay and I, I did that because if we were outputting um too much into the poopy line i wanted to be able to not it just be stored here because the filters are so slow so i was trying to break it up so pipes didn't burst everywhere oh uh, gotcha okay so um well so if you want to hold gas here so it feeds into there so you have a guaranteed pressure yeah just adjust the settings to yeah. I'm just gonna leave it as is. We'll sort okay. out the details later. Right now, the top objective is see if I can get more efficiency out of these filtration units. I'm trying to get 800, 790. It's getting there. What do I have here? Pressure. All right. Oh, good. Um, I think 792 kilopascals is close to 800. Let's ignite the furnace. Yeah, that worked. Thank God, things still work around here. All right. Huh. All right. I have processed all the coal. Temperature's holding, pressure's holding. Temperature's dropping a little bit. Okay, now we're eating up the iron. This can't go any lower than 900 Kelvin, I believe. Pressure's dropping like crazy. I mean, sorry, temperature. Almost there.
All right, we have a green line, so we should have some steel. We have steel. All right. All right, so I'm going to drain the furnace. And that should... So I have a... Okay, I've removed the stress from the input lines of filtration. And yeah, it looks like it's stupid efficient. Oh. Okay. Maybe not stupid efficient, but it's uh, so you have the, the turbo pump is it can be. so. Do you have other logic doing something on this turbo pump? Well? Yeah, so behind you, yeah, or on your right, yeah, yeah, so that <laughs> drives that first turbo pump. Oh, so if so, you want you turn it on until there's zero in here, correct? Okay, perfect. All right, well, um. There is wow okay how much is in this system here wow that that was really darn good because well okay so small container high pressure we dump it into our vast poopy line network which is a big tank <laughs> um yep. which reads 190 uh, 200 cal it's bouncing i guess because it's getting a source from the tank or the furnace and the solid generator or the gas generator so i have a so this is working the new filtering system's working but there's always going to be a, um 16 megapascals in the uh orange network over here right uh yeah the minimum is 13. okay well no actually it's not true um the filtration only turns on if the input line is above 13 megapascals. So it should never exceed 13 megapascals. And I just fixed the uh, drain at the end of that line there. You know, that part that blew up on a, yeah, yeah. Oh. So that should be working again. Oh, okay. Oh, you added a bunch of stuff. Do we need the- Yeah, when in doubt, you know, you yeah. do all the things. <laughs> <laughs> so, I never learned uh, that in school. You went to a better school than I did. <laughs> well, Canadian school system, right? <laughs> okay, all right, all right, sorry. So there's an evaporation valve, which... Um, it's supposed to deal with the water, right? Valve does, right? Condensation valve, which is supposed to take the liquid out of the gas line. And then the uh, the powered one. Purge. Uh, which is to, supposed to take the liquid and vaporize it back into the gas line at a specific pressure of 13 megapascals. Um, it's set to th three... 13,000. Oh, okay. And so, so, but when it... Oh, yeah. it's set to 30,000. That's yeah. not right. That's not right. Now, yeah, I throw everything out. I did pick that intentionally because I wanted to leave that liquid tank pretty much empty. So what is I'll the actual the vent supposed to do? If, if water's on one side and it's going in that direction, is the purge if you know purging? when you look at it it looks like a vent to atmosphere but i think it's just like the butt end of a motor oh okay okay all right all right gotcha all right um so how do you keep so you keep 13 megapascals and you don't turn the filter okay i get that all right and then this turns on to keep this at zero which it's trying to Probably punched out up. Oh, tuned that up a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> All right. Turbo to 14. Yeah, turbo to 14 and filter to 13. Yeah, I'll try that. Yeah, I got another one for you. Uh, yeah, where you at? Generator. Gas generator. So I don't, I can't remember which position the switch needs to be in for the automation. 
think it's in the up position. Okay. Is there, can, can we put another sign so Andy can have a reference? All right, so I'm gonna put this up because this actually shouldn't be on until this number here is at 25, right? Uh, 50. So it kicks on at 50? I thought it was when it gets down to 20. Oh, no, no, it kicks off at 50. It kicks on at 25. Is it? Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> all right, there's, there's another sign. So switch position. And then let's put our thresholds. I, I can't remember it. I thought I'd be able to. Yeah, that's a good idea. No, it is. All right, I'll slap a sign on there. Sweet. All right. <laughs> All right, so then I'm going to take a look at our gases. So they should be filtered and they should be, should be cooling roughly around the same temperature. All right, so let's see here or averaging around the same. So how important is it if, if you're mixing fuel and you have the same temperature gases to mix the fuel, you're, and of course I'm talking about um, hydrogen and oxygen, if they're the same temperature you mix it, you're gonna get a nice mixture of gas, right? When do you start uh, worrying when do you start worrying about if you have a higher temperature than one? If they're off by 10 degrees of each other, is that gonna matter? I, I choose not to worry at all, so it's just me. <laughs> what? Not, I'm not worried about temperature differences. Well, the reason why I am is the first time I learned how to mix fuel, my temperature between A and B was vastly different. So the fuel didn't even ignite. It was a bad mix. Oh, well, we're not that radically different, are we? Well, I, th I mean, that's what th well, that's what I was looking for. I, I didn't know. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I want to say uh, more than a hundred degrees difference. I would be concerned that your Okay. Fuel okay. ratio is not going to be efficient. Okay. All right. So if we have oxygen at 40 and hydrogen at 20, you're not concerned? No. Okay. So as long as they mix at the proper percentages, we're, we're going to have not the... We, we won't have the super unleaded. We'll just have the unleaded. Sure. Isn't that how the they, they up the octane, right? It's more refined. Yeah, I mean, you know, either you have too much hydrogen, which doesn't burn because there's not enough oxygen, or you have too much oxygen, so it doesn't burn because there's not enough hydrogen for it. Okay. Either you're left over with hydrogen or you're left over with oxygen, because it's not a correct, quite a correct mix, but it'll still burn as fuel. Okay, all right. I didn't know if the game actually did that. Oh yeah, it does. Hey, science. It's quirky as all hell, but... <laughs> Did you put text on there? Because I don't see anything. No, I didn't. Okay. I'm um, still not quite sure what those numbers are. So. <laughs> oh, oh for the here. threshold, right. All right. Well, if the number's going up here, that means we're transferring. That's weird. I don't see a. Yeah, I'm way confused. Battery number is going up. No, now it's going down. Now it's going up. Oh, oh, okay. By the time I look over the switch toggles. Okay, never mind. There is a 10% difference between top side and bottom side. So that's when uh, Ben's logic kicks in. And you can see it does it ever so briefly to bridge that gap of the 10%. So when that light, when that number changes, one of these switches will be on. One is sending power down, one is sending power up, or receiving power, sorry. <sighs> so evidently, we had some sort of corruption that required a save and restart because we were bursting pipes like crazy for no apparent reason.
Okay, signs up. All right, I'm gonna check it out. See text. That's good. But I know there was a problem that you, as the client, would not see what I would put in there. So minimum 25, max 50. So it turns on when this drops down to 25. This stays on until that gets to 50. Yep. All right. And then now we need to know position of switch. Um. So the way it works, <laughs> uh, it's a Schmidt trigger, but the Schmidt the Schmidt trigger overrides, or I should say, flips the switch. Okay. All right. So now the Schmidt trigger, as you know, will turn off the generator if the battery charge is above fifty percent. But if you override it, it's just going to run forever. Okay, all right. So regardless of the switch position, the, the Schmidt takes a look at logic, not the switch, and do what it needs to do. But doesn't the switch get also flipped? The Schmidt trigger? Uh, yes, the Schmidt trigger will flip actually flip the switch. Yes. Okay, all right. So if it's in the incorrect position because we overrid it and we stop it before the condition, the Schmidt trigger will still keep the generator going and then rebound, we'll redo the switch. Yeah, so the limitation here is that um, this the Schmidt trigger will do what it's designed to do when the conditions change. Let's say, for example, the batteries go from 49% charge to 51% charge, that's a change of state. Okay. So right. then the, the Schmidt trigger does something. But if the battery is already at 51, but it goes to 53, then it doesn't do anything. Because so it's, it's above the generator. the generator right. and well, it, it to on, and the charge changes from 51 to 53, the Schmidt trigger does nothing. Right. 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 So let's, uh, let's make sure everything works. So I'm going to turn on some stuff at night to drain some power. So that means we'll be transferring from top side or from below to top side, correct? Uh, correct. Checking the transfer state board over here, which has a lovely sign. Turning everything on. Okay. So far, both batteries are just draining very slowly. Pish, posh, tally ho, daft, bugger off, and such. Yes, yes. We're all very fancy on the moon. Oh, turn these on. Well, I'm glad you guys like the change of music. Well, deep miners should be doing what they do do. do. Oh, yeah, you're draining power faster up there. All right, good. Let's go to the board. All right, so I need to open... There we go. Yeah, it's kind of cool. We're actually generating no power right now. <laughs> All right, good. Just, you know, what it's supposed to do. I see you went with the light and ethereal music. Tricks won't work on me. Oh, they will eventually. <laughs> It's very interesting. The headphones I wear are actually, they're not Bluetooth, they're actually wireless headphones. And this may, may, may be just my lame observation, but if I turn the volume down too low, because I use VLC as the audio player, 
I can't hear it, but I can hear it through the stream. So I think the, oh, hey, Ben. So, oh yeah, total generation zero. Because- Drawing 13 kilowatts, 13.1, 13.2. And the yeah, big drain should be, wait, 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 uh, arc furnace room. Wow, really? Nothing on, they're and just what's on. What's called a mining area, which I think is the mining processing. Oh, okay. So right now- 2.12 kilowatts. Yeah, the deep miners are on. I can turn this off though. Oh, right, the miners, yes. Miners are on. Now, even though the centrifuge is gas powered, it still has an electrical spot, so it still needs power. So what, what I'm trying to do here is before day daylight happens, which we're a ways off, top side, oh, I don't know how much top side. We have one full battery, one and two thirds batteries. So what we ran into is I did an over-engineering here on some parallel cooling because we, we could not cool the gas as fast. But that's no longer a problem. So we, what is our average? 45 degrees Celsius? I can't remember the number. 35, I think. 35, is that 300 degrees Kelvin? Uh, 27 is 300. Because I think that's Unless I was looking at the wrong log logic chip, which is entirely possible. Um, so we read, compare balance cooler and the memory set with 303. All right, I thought it was 300. I got one more bug to fix that second triple pump's not turning on. Now, with all the problems we had topside with the condensation valve, we didn't have any problem with the X. Although I think it was because it was too warm. The main X. So anyways, is what I'm trying to do is generate a huge power drain so that this number here drops down to 25. So I've turned everything on topside. And as you can see, there is a definitely a power drain going on. And top or bot or the below is Oh, it's a ten percent difference, not a one percent. All right. So we're draining power almost evenly between bottom side and top side. Oh, wow. You gotta see this. Okay. See a turbo pump. Take on. how many moles that oxygen filter is processing right now. Just by pointing at the green uh, report there. 14.5 megapascal. Oh, I see. 14.4. Wow. Moles per tick. That's, that's impressive. Right. That's because. We have a turbo, we have logic that keeps a high pressure in there. So, okay. So we're not primarily relying on the pumps that are inside the filters anymore. Yeah, pretty much. Yay. If they're weak, we just give them a little bit of a kick. Okay, sweet. Yeah, that is a lot better. So again, no power generation. Oh, I was gonna fly over and see. Solar panels are lining up. There we go. The filtration units are flickering on and off here, so it's about to balance out. Oh, we're not going to get down to 25%. I was hoping so. We still need to put regular pumps on the filters output oh. to the various storage tanks.
Ooh, you know what? I could turn off the logic to the solar panels, right? And that'll prevent solar. Let's see, which one is that? That will be this one, right? The logic that reads daylight sensor. All right, turn that off. They're still. Um, I might have cheated there. That's I might all right. have added a uh, daylight sensor for the purposes of turning on that light on the board about whether or not solar is power is being generated. Jetpack low. Oh, jetpack low. I was trying to interrupt the solar generation because I wanted to make sure the generator. Could well, it should be isolated by a transformer, so you can just turn a transformer off. Um, okay. I don't want to throw the wrong, wrong one you're going to have to show me. I have to swap out my jetpack. Uh, on my way. Wait. Right there. Okay. Sun's getting ready to pop up. The panels right. are panels are connected to this yellow line here, right? And then right. you feed into this large transformer. So just cut never the line. mind the uh, never mind the cable analyzer here. It's just the way I'm carrying data through the. Right, I got it. Arc. So if we turn off this transformer here. Oh, okay. Then it's going to cut off the power solar feed. But the, the batteries are still going to get charged, though. No, they won't. Uh, uh, output. Doesn't it go through this red line right here? No, it goes through the green line. But the red line is connected to... A cable analyzer. Yeah, okay. Hang on. So you're saying then, then we're getting power from down? No, because these are getting trickle charged. Yeah, the transformer is actually tripping on and off right now. It's like the solar panels are starting to generate power. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're generating 500 watts, almost. So what I want to do was force the, the gas standard. So why is this trickling on and on? I think that's a bug. So I'm going to do it this way. I disconnect that. Drop that. So even though the panels are generating, it's not going anywhere. So those are draining nicely. But power would transfer from downstairs upstairs, which is fine. Huh. All right, so the generator turned on. Hey, all right. Good. All right, so I can reconnect the panels. Unless you don't want me to, unless you're trying to figure something out. No, no, go ahead. I'm kind of curious as to why this transformer is going on and off. I think it might be an animation bug, unless it's actually doing something. All right, so the reason why I did that is I wanted to make sure our Schmidt trigger, as Ben was describing to me, actually worked. So you can see that our power dropped below 25, so the generator kicked on. And this will stay on until it gets to 50%. Okay. 
then top side's number should be going up. And we shouldn't see any transfer going on because it only does that if there's a 10% difference. Board's lit up here. We're good. Total power draws 14 kilowatts. Total generation is 41. So we're actually, wait, wait, how much are we using? 14? Yep. Oh, so we're generating more than we're using for the first time. <laughs> All right. Well, that's with both solar and the gas generator. All right, cool. All right, so let me go over here. Pick this up. Which means you could probably turn off the gas generator if you wanted to save some fuel. And I just want to make sure the automation kicks in. So oh, now I'm going to go. Was there any doubt? <laughs> Well, I just, I thought I was messing up the Schmidt trigger by turning the switch on and off. Oh, uh, yeah, actually, you, you might have, just in case you were turning it uh, on off during its on cycle. 50%, because yeah. then it just never stops. All right. So, kind so of we a were. weird thing is a Schmidt trigger, um, if you. Uh, you know, on the top end, like I said, if you turn it on above 50, then it never turns off. But on the low, on the opposite end, uh, if the charge drops below 25, I believe the Schmidt trigger will keep turning it on. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. That, okay. Yeah, by design, right. So now that the sun is out, the top side has surpassed the bottom. So what we should be seeing is when that goes to, we'll say 38, it should be sending power from top side to bottom in conjunction with the generator. So we will hit the 50% faster. Yeah, it's about a five point difference right now. It's gonna take a little while. Well, it used to be at, at, at below uh, like 8%, so it sun's catching up. The gas generator is still running, yeah? Yep. All right, yeah, so while that's gas going on... is charging the bottom batteries while the solar panels are charging the top side batteries. The Can you check your logic for the super fuel? Because like I said, I think... Oh, yeah. I think I programmed it back the way it should be. Because what I did is there, there was like, uh, like 250 passels in the tank. It was just going so slow. So I just deconstructed it, put it back. And I think I renamed it, but of course, when you do that, it broke the logic oh, reader. Right. Okay, gotcha. So that was interesting that we started off with a bunch of pipes bursting for no real reason. And it was just a I think because I had a null ref and I didn't do anything about it because I, I saw null ref and it went by so fast that it said sound in there. I go, oh, right, something happened. I didn't hear a sound and that's why it complained versus. Uh, logic's perfect. All right, sweet. I can follow direction. Shall we switch to super fuel? Um, I'm going to come down and witness that. I just want to make sure. Okay, so I can turn this okay. off. And one sec, we're almost done processing all the ore. Got four chunks left, three chunks, two chunks. That's done. And pull the lever. And then arc furnishes should be popping on. There it goes. That off. That will simmer down. All right, coming down. <sighs> all right, so all the lane, all the, the, 
One curious thing about the logic for the mixer down here is the tank read something, right? So let's say just two or 200. The pipe going into the elbow, going into the turbo read the same thing, which makes sense, but the four way intersection didn't read anything. It read zero. Huh. Yeah. That's no bueno. Yeah. So I deconstructed everything and reconstructed it, so. Okay. All right. So you just have to turn on the logic router and it'll mix it. So let me ask you, when that does that. Yeah, so before we do that, yeah. Okay. Right now, all these valves are set up for direct fuel injection. It's not configured for super fuel. Okay. All right. So we need to flip the, the correct valves. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in order to do that, we might have to drain the existing fuel line. Oh, okay. All right. So, so let me go turn. It's in the fuel line right now to the gas generator. All right. So I have turned off the source for right now, unless you have a different source valve. I guess I could have turned okay, So out. right now the fuel line has pure fuel. Right. How much? So, uh, about 120 moles. It's 1.6 megapascals. All right. Uh, at least on this side of it. Yeah, that's what I saw um, also. Then there's on the opposite side over there. Uh, it goes through. It's weird because these pressure regulators are set for 70 kilopascals, but it only feeds it at, I'm going to say 60. So you don't get a full 70 kilopascals. It seems like they're not huh. working in conjunction. Okay. So, so I, the problem though is that there's fuel in on both sides of these. Right. Uh, so w w we just let it need to run, unless you have a purge. I guess you have this purge valve if you want to do that. But that's what that turbo pump is there for. Okay. So that'll put it right back into the poopy line, but it won't be gas. It'll get resorted. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Um, well, since you're not worried about a 10 or 15 degrees variance on mixing, and I, I was concerned with 10 degrees. I didn't know how bad that would be. So if I look at our oxygen temperature, I'm see seeing 36 degrees, and then our hydrogen is 23. So, what, 12? It's 13 yeah, degrees. Fine. All right, then I'm not, I am no longer concerned. Excellent. What is your favorite um, waffle? Wow. Well, Axitrex, how you doing? Thank you for the follow. What is my favorite waffle? Waffles. Right there. Oh, and, and, and that one too. I made them both. Waffle. <laughs> um, so our hydrogen source is low because we haven't been processing anything from the furnace. Okay. All right. Waffles are just pancakes with eggs. <laughs> and then if they're Belgian, that just means they're different. They use a different gym. Okay. We're going to try a 5% uh, nitrous oxide injection. All right. Uh, I think we're going to purge just as much as we can. Okay. Um, if the generator doesn't have any fuel, it just will stop running. No, it's it's gonna run on a mix of whatever's left of regular fuel plus whatever a new super fuel we inject. Oh, okay. Uh, so it should increase in performance a little bit. It might take a little bit of time though. But, eh, it's, it'd be fine. So you want this valve it's, off, right? So. Because this is what feeds the regular fuel. Uh, yeah. So let's leave that off for now. What about this one? Uh, See, at this point, we need to drain the existing fuel. So uh, we want that on. Yeah, okay. okay. This one over here is off. That's perfect. Let's make sure this line's not contaminated. 
Oh, I see. So it's you're gonna you're gonna mix the pre-existing stuff. I got it. Okay. Okay, and so turn these volume pumps on. This will force the fuel going the other way, away from the. Wait. No, no, we don't want those off. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. The mixer's just gonna pull from the line. Then I got you. Okay. Yeah. I see. Okay. I don't think those pumps actually need. I can't remember why I put them there. Um. <laughs> so this is uh, what's going on inside here. Bypass valve is open. I don't think he wants the pumps running. Well, we have nothing but so I can't pump anything past this point. That's off. So you have nothing okay. but raw so fuel. We're good. We're gonna go ahead and turn on this pump over here. All right. Now we're gonna drain this uh, fuel line. Okay. All right. You wanna keep an eye on it? Sure. Ready? Uh huh. Except for I don't. Oh, okay. So, All right. We're draining the fuel. All right. So there's nine hassles with no source. Right. Wow, that was quick. We're getting yep. zero already. Hang on. Make sure. I'm turning off the pump. Uh, yep. Okay. So now we switch to super fuel. The way we do that is. I'm mix it first. Oops. Hold on. <laughs> uh, Okay, first we switch this off here because that's the switch to peak normal fuel. Yeah, even though this one's off also. Yeah, this one over here is essentially just a safety. Gotcha. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and turn this one on here, which will allow the fuel to be mixed with the nitrous oxide. Right. Nitrous oxide is currently open and there's not much. Only 62. Yeah, because it's a stupidly long network. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, next, we okay. This valve is on here, which will allow the mixed fuel to enter the super fuel tank. Yep. Okay, and this one right here is shut off. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. yep. So now we're gonna switch the feed. over here to the super fuel. Now this is what's going to get pumped by those two pumps over there. All right, it'll go into it, the generator. It'll fill this whole network up for this valve and these volume pumps too. Right. So right. now we need to generate the super fuel. So now we need to turn on the logic writer there. Ready? So do the honors. Yeah. On. And the mixer not doing it. Why not? I don't know. <laughs> the conditions for the logic says that it turns on the mixer if the <clears> pressure <throat> in the super fuel tank is less than 500 kPa. All right, no. so I'm going to check the logic one more time. All right. <clears throat> I might have not named the tank correctly. Because when I copied and pasted, it dropped the L. Turn off the logic writer here. Uh, logic reader. Hydration critical. The logic reader is reading zero. Tank insulated super fuel. That looks okay. Super fuel mixer control. The input is the logic reader set to pressure, memory. right? That's right. Yeah. Well, there's a compare state of one. Is the mixer maybe in the wrong state itself? I can't tell. I mean, on would be green. That's a good point. I right, go ahead and turn. Go ahead and turn that writer on again. 
and let me turn this on. So that's going to be working, except for nothing's mixing. Oh, there's no gas coming in. Oh, there you go. Turn that on. Oh, right. The big safety. <laughs> All right. Now we got super fuel. Okay, safety. Save their butts. Yep. Well, and there's also one other safety right right where the tank is, too. I'm reading a trace amount of nitrogen in the super fuel tank. Oh, no, wait. That's not nitrogen. That's nitrous oxide. Okay. Yeah. At 5%. Perfect. All right. So I see super fuel and generator. It's mixing so very slowly. Yeah, so the aha. Uh -huh. So here's the situation. We have 19% battery back here. The Schmidt trigger did not kick on. Or it did? No, it did not because the generator is in an off state. Lost Ben. Ben go. Any chance you might have run out of fuel while we were messing around with this thing? Probably, but if I check, uh, I get over there. There is 70 kilopascals of fuel in, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, so it, that's a condition. Yeah, this is pure super fuel on the, the output side of the pumps here. Yeah, All it right. ran out of fuel. All right, I cycled the switch, it's on. Oh, I think. All right. See how easy it is, it is to mess up something here? Sure is. <laughs> you run out of fuel, your car don't go anywhere. So instead yeah, of generating... one condition that the uh, Schmidt trigger did, didn't account for. Yeah. So normally, the output is, if I go and say gas gen or a tour, in here, does it say how much it outputs? It does not. Yeah, though. 11.8 kilowatts. Oh. What? No, no, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the Pedia. It doesn't show how much it generates, I guess. Oh. I guess because it depends upon your, okay. Yeah, no, it's generating 11.8. Okay. It's better than 11.4. Yeah. Yes, yes. I agree. There you go, super fuel. <laughs> I concur. Top side is low because of running stuff. Right, I'm going to go fix my water situation here. Actually, that is uh, that is time for the day, Ben. That was perfect, too. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Good so, work, good work. Right, so we did get a couple things done after we chased down some bugs that we thought were not bugs, it just something happened in the game, we had to save and refile. So we redid the, um, I over-engineered this. So this is medium radiators on gas using oxygen in a parallel setup versus what we used to have a series. Works much better now. Um, ben also has supercharged <laughs> our, um, our filtration system by forcing a certain amount of pressure. So it forces these pumps to work faster and we get a more efficient filter. And what used to happen is we used to have a lot of gas. You're gonna steal that? Yeah, no, do it. We actually got the idea from Electro posted something in, uh, in chat. Um, so it used to be, we would hold gobs and gobs of gas, which is an inaccurate measurement because the filters were so slow. Oh, I saw a power flicker. Did you do something? Hold on me. Uh oh. Something uh, happened. Did we blow a wire? <laughs> the hydrogen, uh, hydrogen truck. Yeah, we did. a crazy amount of power. All right. Yeah, we blew a wire. A couple of them, actually. We can fix it cool. next time. Yeah, yeah. Because that'll be there. So that'll be a you're holding. <laughs> yeah, that's what's important. Oh, so 
While you go get yourself tucked in, I want to see if all the power is drained at site B. I turned off power transfer to oh, site B. Tuck in at site B? Uh, no, I turned off all the power. Oh, okay. And we're down to a little bit of fuel, a little bit of fuel, a little bit of power, which is... I leave... Oh, the battery charger is on. <laughs> okay. Monitors are on. Oh, there's some logic on. That's right. All right. Got it. All right. So anyways, we redid the filtering, so it's more efficient. Our cooling is working better because of parallel versus series. And what was happening is pipes were randomly bursting and we couldn't figure out why it wasn't, didn't have, we thought the condensation valves were broke. They weren't. And I had a couple null refs, but it, the null ref briefly said something about sound, like something happened and I was supposed to hear the sound. I didn't hear it, so I didn't worry about it. And then after I did a save and reload, now magically everything works. Yep, and um, next time I've got a trick to make the system even more efficient. No way. Filtration system, anyways. All right. Hi, guys. Tomorrow's going to be some Kerbal. Ben, thanks for uh, troubleshooting and, and explaining the new filtering system because I, I didn't know that was, you could do that. Yeah, I'm, it turned out better than I expected. I'm very happy with it. It didn't make sense that if the filter's pump speed runs at a certain speed and you force more into it, I would just think that would uh, create a bottleneck inside the atmospheric unit and blow it up. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, 14, uh, 14 moles per tick, we'll take it. That's awesome. Oh, there you go. All right, guys, let's roll some credits. Ben, we'll see you next Sunday. All right, Axe, thanks for the follow. Flip, Cade, thanks for the resub, guys. Appreciate it. <clears throat> and I'll see you guys tomorrow.